Hi everyone and welcome to this video about enabling uh, ingress on Kubernetes. And many people are asking me how is this done? They don't quite grasp the concept of how this works. And yeah, we'll just make a simple video showing uh, how easy it is to uh, to enable uh, to enable that. I already went ahead and deployed a Kubernetes cluster uh, on uh, Azure, so it's an AKS uh, cluster. It's called uh, ING or ING, yeah. and uh, yeah, I'm not gonna not gonna show how this is done. It's quite easy to do. You'll find this all in the documentation uh, online. Um, and I already did necessary steps to connect to that uh, cluster uh, from within the uh, Azure uh, Cloud shell, right? If you don't know how to do that, you just use uh, az aks uh, list and then minus o table to list the Kubernetes clusters. Then you use az aks get credentials. You specify the name of the cluster. You specify the group of the cluster or the resource group where the cluster is deployed. And then of course, you'll download the credential file to your .cube folder and you can start using kubectl uh, to interact with the cluster. So in my case, uh, kubectl uh, get nodes would give me the three nodes of my cluster and uh, I also typically alias kubectl so alias k is uh, kubectl that makes it easier to of course use um, uh, if you have to type a lot of commands it's easier then to use the, the k uh, command yeah. that's basically it now um, to make this all a bit easier I also have a uh, repository on GitHub. Uh, it's called Docker Course. So can you you can clone that repository uh, quite uh, quite simply to your cloud shell. Just use git clone and then paste uh, the git URL, and uh, you're good to go. I already did that. So in my uh, Docker Course folder, uh, I have all the, the the files from that repository. Now the main files we will use are the ones in uh, the Kubernetes uh, folder and if you uh, list those out you'll find all kinds of files, all kinds of YAML files and the one we're going to use is the Nginx full uh, YAML file. Now we'll use the code editor of uh, the uh, Cloud Shell and take a look at the Nginx uh, full uh, one and you'll see that's basically as simple as it gets, right? So we have a Kubernetes deployment, which is called Nginx. And there we specify that we want uh, three replicas of uh, pods, uh, which are defined within this template uh, spec. And we're using the Nginx uh, container here, Nginx image 1.15.2. The pods themselves, they expose Nginx on port 80. But of course, I'd like to load balance between those different pods within the cluster and that's why I need this service object as well. So this service is creating a Kubernetes service which exposes port 80 at the service level. It's connecting to the pods at the back end on port 80 uh, and the service is of type cluster IP which means it's only available within the cluster. And we are going to use an ingress controller which is basically for you older folks of out there a reverse proxy that has been that existed for it's existing for years and years and years already but that reverse proxy will dynamically be configured uh, to expose services like this which are defined within uh, the cluster so let's deploy this first we'll close the editor and i'm using k apply uh, minus f and i am going to use the nginx full dot yaml here and if i do that we have a couple of things here first of all a couple of pods will be created three nginx pods and each pod contains one container running the nginx image that we specified um, and then secondly we also have a service okay get service uh, there you see it the nginx um, service cluster ip is the type and yeah within our um, within our uh, it's using an address from the uh, IP block that was defined when we deployed Kubernetes within uh, the cluster in this case cluster IP is 10.0. and so on logically uh, this is only available or reachable within the Kubernetes cluster so that's not good we want to get to this uh, to this uh, service from the outside like you see here I want to have 
uh, I want to be able to browse to it from the outside, from my laptop in this case, and I want to see the default Nginx page uh, as we haven't defined any specific uh, page uh, here or something like that. This is a default, as default as it, as it gets, right? Now, if we want to expose this service using um, an ingress definition and an ingress controller, yeah, we have to install this kind of ingress controller. We have to install this reverse proxy, right? And now there are many to choose from. I've chosen in this example here, or in this case, a traffic one, which is quite a good one. And if you go on my blog, blog.baka.info, and you search using the search box for traffic, you'll end up uh, at this quick overview of the traffic ingress controller installation. Now, we're not going to go through this, but I suggest you read this through uh, as well. Um, and because we're going to install traffic using Helm, which is a package manager for Kubernetes, you have to make sure that your cluster is well prepared to do this, right? Now, you can either follow the blog and follow the steps, but you can also go uh, from the clone repository in the ingress folder here, you will find a, a Helm config shell script. And that does exactly the same. It installs Helm on your cluster, so we can deploy traffic using a Helm chart. Let me clear this out again, and let me take a look at the command to actually install um, traffic. You'll find it here. So you can copy this from the blog, copy this, and then in your cloud shell, you can uh, paste it. Now, I would recommend that you modify Acme staging to true, yeah, because um, you don't want to issue right away production level certificates. And by the way, Acme staging refers to Let's Encrypt. Acme is their, like their protocol to ask for certificates. And with this, you're saying, give me certificates from the staging environment. They are not fully trusted by your browser. But you can request quite a lot of them for your domain. There is no rate limiting or less rate limiting uh, there. So when you're starting out with this, it's best to put it on true. Uh, you should also fill in your email address properly here as well. If you see here, I put email at domain.com. Yeah, put your own email address uh, there. What we've also done here is you put the on host rule option to true. And that means that you'll see this later, but I'm seeing it now already. When we define an ingress object at the Kubernetes level, we're going to specify a host. Well, traffic will actually look at the host file you define there and will request a certificate based on that host defined in that file. That's all there is to it to have a reverse proxy, right? So it's an ingress controller that is also SSL uh, enabled. And if you look at the other parameters here, yes, SSL enabled is true. We enforce it, which means we need to redirect from port 80 to 443 and so on. You'll find all of this documented in the traffic documentation as well, right? So when you run this command on your cluster that has Helm installed, some things will be installed in the cube system namespace. Now, I already did that, yeah? And you can see that here when I'm doing Helm LS, you see that traffic was installed only once and we installed version 1.7.9 uh, um, that's not so important right now um, so yes we have traffic installed um, let's take a look what we had get uh, pods in the namespace cube uh, system and there you see near the bottom here traffic that's the actual component that is doing all the work here for us uh, that's the one that's doing the reverse proxying. If we do the same, but for services, that's a very important thing here. If we do k get service, you'll find that traffic is exposed. So the traffic service, which actually routes to this traffic pod, the traffic service is exposed using a load balancer IP. Uh, this means that Azure, because we are using AKS here, so we integrate with the Azure cloud, an Azure load balancer was configured and it listens uh, at, the, at, the, at the public end of the load balancer. It listens on the address you see here. Now, what I did in my DNS provider, which is Cloudflare, by the way, I 
put in a record, an A record, for uh, a wildcard record for baka.info, uh, so asterisk.baka.info, and that one actually points to this address. That means I can use any kind of host like demo.baka.info. That one will resolve to the IP address you see over there. That IP address actually ends up at our traffic reverse proxy, right? Our ingress controller. And then it can do its magic. And I'll use that later uh, to indeed expose a site called demo.baka.info. But I could use any name uh, that, I, that I wanted uh, there. Yeah. So this actually means that we are set up to do uh, the magic, right? And that's uh, exposing the Nginx service using uh, a traffic uh, ingress uh, definition. Let's see how that works. Let me clear this out uh, first. Let me do code dot again. And let's look at the ingress.yaml file. Now, if you compare this ingress.yaml file to the one you find in the repo, you'll see it's different. Uh, because we have to modify this for the uh, uh, ingress controller and the host names that you that you want. So yes, an ingress controller, like in this case, uh, uh, traffic uh, needs to be told what to do, and we tell the ingress controller what to do by defining yeah, ingress objects using standard YAML as you're used to within a Kubernetes environment. So we create an object of type uh, ingress. Um, we give it a name. I call this one Nginx because I'm, yeah, I wasn't very inventive uh, here. I also specified an annotation uh, to use the, the traffic ingress controller. That's not really required in this case because I only have one ingress controller running on the system. But just for completeness, I added it there. Yeah, I want the ingress controller or I want, the, yeah, in this case, I want traffic for this site, demo.bacal.info. I want traffic to use TLS, so I want, a I want a secured connection. That's why in the spec I have this uh, TLS uh, config, and I specify in the, the host uh, that I want the certificate for. And to um, direct traffic, uh, or to give traffic information about what to do when a request comes in into the ingress controller, into traffic, in this case for demo.bacal.info, there I'm telling you what I'm saying actually. You get a request for that host, you have to redirect to a service called Nginx, right? And that service, as we know, we defined it earlier, is running on service port 80. So normally, the only thing I would need to do is to um, create this object, and we do this with k apply minus f and we uh, um, create the ingress definition. Okay, he did it. Uh, let's close this out now. Close the editor. Let's do k get ing. And yes, we have an, an ingress uh, definition here. So that means that if I go to uh, HTTP and I'll explicitly go to HTTP demo dot dot info. Let's see what happens. Okay, I'm ending up at the default page of Nginx. Now, that's fine. This will usually work if you did everything correctly in the ingress definition. This will usually work out of the box. Uh, of course, the thing is, was the certificate provisioned? Uh, did we get the certificate from Let's Encrypt from the staging environment? Let's check it out here. So not secure, that, that's expected when you use the, the staging environment. And click on the certificate. And yes, what you see here is that the certificate was issued to demo.baka.info, issued by the fake intermediate X1 certificate authority. That's the staging environment of Let's Encrypt. And it's valid for yeah, three months, 90 days, like it usually uh, is. And it's fully normal that this one is not secure. It's not trusted because we're using the staging environment. Eh? We'd have to switch to the production environment to issue production level certificates. And then they would be fully secured and you wouldn't get that, uh, that um, warning here. Now, just for completeness, let's, let's check the logs of, um, of uh, 
traffic that you also know how what to do in case there's an error and the, you know, errors might happen uh, it's fully normal that uh, that these things happen you have to know how you can find these out so let's do k get pots and in this case in the namespace cube system yeah cube system there you see traffic is running so we do k and then it's here eh? so shown that earlier traffic is running that's the pot i want to get the logs from that uh, pot so i'm going to copy the name of the pot uh, there are fancier ways to do this but just copy and paste this here and let's not forget to append cube system uh, to the end and there we have the logs and let's take a look yeah he started up he has uh, he uh, configured the, the provider so the acme provider which is which is basically the the, the software that that uh, that uh, interacts with let's encrypt to retrieve uh, certificates from the system and there we can see yes we are using the staging environment we said that in the definition or in the, in the deployment of the um, of the of the uh, of traffic and we also specified the on host uh, rule um yeah i'm not you're not seeing uh, here uh, that he actually asked for the certificate and so on and so on yeah, that's that's fine uh, that that's not so uh, not so important and let's also take a look at our certificate in in more detail let's go back here yeah yeah i cannot really see it there but it could also be that i'm using now the same certificate from an earlier request because he is doing some uh, some um, caching as well of those uh, certificates uh, in um, in a um, in a volume right uh, you can see that here if you do k get uh, pv uh, what you'll see here is that there's a uh, volume so it's a disk uh, of one gigabyte uh, so an azure disk of one gigabyte which is attached uh, to the uh, traffic uh, pot and that's where traffic is also caching the certificates uh, because of course yeah if you restart uh, the pot or other things like that uh, you don't want to um, uh, ask for all your certificates again right you're gonna see okay do I still have them on disk are they still valid if they are valid use the ones from the disk and don't ask for certificate again at let's encrypt so it's perfectly normal when you deploy uh, traffic that you see suddenly that there's also a volume uh, created so in this case an Azure disk has been created um, and this uh, this Azure disk uh, is is bound to that uh, pot using a, a persistent volume uh, claim. So if you do k get pvc, um, actually is that correct? Um, yeah, okay. It's not that's not not that important here. Basic thing is that your uh, that you have the the um, that that you know that you have the the Oh, yeah. and by the way yes no i have to actually do this with my cube system yeah that, <laughs> that's the one sorry so i made a mistake there to not go to the cube system uh the persistent volume claim is indeed living in the cube system uh, namespace and so uh that's the one that's responsible for making sure there's a volume being attached to the traffic uh pot when when required eh? and yeah persistent volume is, is cluster wide and that's why i see it there but the pvc is not cluster cluster wide yeah good so that's basically uh, basically it so what have you seen well very simple when you have uh, services deployed within your kubernetes cluster and they are using internal service ips and eh, they're of they're of, uh, of that type you can expose those services using an ingress controller just look at my blog post to see how you deploy traffic as an ingress controller as a simple example here and with a simple thing, namely an ingress definition, you can at once publish um, uh, your service to the outside world and also make sure you get a certificate uh, for that site as well with the Let's Encrypt uh, integration. So I hope you liked this quick overview and till some other time. Thank you. Bye bye.